But what has been interesting about TV in, in terms of being disillusioned on a, is that it is a completely different medium because your role as a director is a completely different one. Like it shouldn't even be called the same. They should make up a new word, I think, for it. Because in a, in a movie, in a feature film, you create a world from scratch, right? You cast your people, you did make every decision, the costumes, the locations, all of that from scratch. You work on the script, you put your team together, you are responsible for everything. And no, not that all, every idea is yours, but you are the filter through which everyone else's ideas are filtered and you as the director are the one that goes yes, no, yes, yes, no. You know? In TV, you come on board with a script that the DGA says you need to have 24 hours before principal photography. So sometimes you get a script as you get on the plane, you read the script on the plane, it's very clear because the script is already such a political document because it's been in development with the network, with the production company, with the showrunner, with the mm -hmm, or financiers, that this is already the compromised document that everyone agreed on. The last thing they want is your opinion about anything as a director. It's very clear, direct what's on the page. So that's the first difference. Then the actors are already cast. All the sets are already built in the studio. They already are wearing what they have been wearing for the last couple of episodes. In a, in a feature film, you are the one that knows most about the story and knows most about the world it's set in. And that is where you get all your s authority and strength from. So you don't have to pull the director card because you have substance, because you have sat with the story for so long. In TV, it's the exact opposite. You know less about everything than anyone else who is there and who has worked on all the other episodes. Right? And everybody knows that, including the actors. And the showrunner, which I, I wasn't even clear on the concept when I did my first episode, that there is a showrunner who has overseen the writing concept and is the authority on set and who is actually making the decisions. It's not you as the director. Because at first I was always like, shouldn't I make that decision? You know, we're in production meetings where in a, in a feature film environment you would get asked a thousand questions from all the department heads and suddenly I was in a production meeting for TV where I wasn't asked a single question. I was more like, a de uh, I was auditing the production meeting more than anything. And then there's another thing in TV which is called the tone meeting, which I also wasn't familiar with. I saw on the schedule tonight, tone meeting. So I showed up for the tone meeting. I was like, I wonder what, the, should I prepare something? What is this? It's basically where the writers sit you down and exp go through the script scene by scene and explain to you what is important about every scene and what they need you to deliver. And they will tell you about every actor's weaknesses and strengths and about, you know, be careful that that doesn't happen here too. And you basically take notes and then you go on set and you try to deliver that. And at first it was a real kind of switch that you had to make in your creative ego because you, you were so used, I was so used to being the creative authority on set and at least have the last word, not with a budget, obviously, if something's out, outside of the budget, the producer will have the last word and very quickly tell you what you can and can't do. But within the creative process, I was the one who got to make the decisions. With TV, it's more like you are an advisor who can voice a suggestion, but whether that is being done depends on if it falls on you know, fruitful ground or not with the showrunner, with the actors. And because the actors are very aware that you are not the authority, they have no problem saying like, no, I won't do that. And so you are in a position where you can't plan very much because you can only, in a movie you can plan because you can count on the people that you cast making a concerted effort to execute what you're trying to do. In TV, there might be one or two people that just know their character better and they protect that character, which I completely understand because they're dealing with a different director every week and if they completely did what every director wanted the show wouldn't have any, any continuity and consistency so they have to protect that but that also means if I go in with a rigid plan I will just hit a wall and that'll be the end of it you know so after I, I got through that first shock where I was like what am I actually because I want to be a good director I've been hired I want to do my job I want to be worth the money they're paying me what do I actually do if I came to set 
I did the blocking. That's the one thing you get to do as a TV director. You get to suggest where everyone should stand and where everyone should move. If I drop dead after that, I don't think anyone would notice until the end of the day if someone else called action every now and then. It's amazing. But that was the disillusion. Is that a word? Delusion? Disillusion Dis with, with the process. Disillusionment, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Where you're like, this is not the creative process I went to film school for and I kind of want to put a bullet in my head right now. But then I realized that it's the greatest film school you could ever go through because you have to deliver something within a world that has been created and it's like this training exercise because you have to understand what that world is, what the rules of that world are, what the tone of that world is and you have almost no time to understand how every actor works because with a movie you have rehearsal time and that you, you, know, you have much more time to warm up with people whereas in TV you have minutes before you are shooting your first take and then you have one or two takes and then you have to move on. In a movie you do like Fincher, 40 takes, you know, there's always something interesting. Here, the actors have prepared their performance, which in a movie doesn't happen. I think in a movie, the movie actor prides himself or herself to come to set as a blank slate, you know, and then just try stuff. And you put your heads together and the joy is to experiment and find things together. In TV, you don't have that because you don't have the time. You're shooting a 45-minute episode in six days there is no time for experimentation. So they come with a, with a performance that they have thought out in their hotel rooms and they show it to you and you get one tweak, maybe two, and if you want more than that, everything comes to a standstill and there's this atmosphere of something's wrong. You know, we're out of sync or something and everyone gets insecure and the showrunner comes in and makes the decision. So I kind of quickly had to learn that I, it's a completely different rhythm, you know. And the problem is that by the time that you have earned your actor's trust, and I get that that's a very valid process for them to go through, the shoot is over. Like on every episode where I have six days, by day six I have the feeling now we all trust each other, we know what we're capable of, and now we could go off and make a movie together or make an episode together or whatever. The problem is that we just made the episode, you know, while that wasn't necessarily the case. So it's a great, it's a great environment to try your own directing abilities because you have to be fast and you get to try a lot of stuff. And if stuff goes wrong, you don't feel quite as connected to the final creative outcome as you would in a movie that you have been working on for two years. So it gives you a certain freedom. With a movie, if I drive to set in the morning, I'm nauseous because I'm so nervous because everything, if, if anything doesn't work out that day, then it's on me, you know? Whereas in, in TV, the machine is already running. Someone had this great analogy, actually the showrunner of the first show that I did, he said, in movies, you hold the steering wheel like this, tight, you know? And with a TV show, it's more this where you kind of gingerly kind of, you know, and that's exactly what it is. And it's like, to stay with the car analogy, it's like a, a movie is like a stick shift, I think, where if you don't press the gas, it'll just stand and nothing will happen. Whereas with an automatic, if you don't do anything, it kind of slowly drives anyway. And that is what the TV show is. I think a TV show could direct itself without a director, probably, and would more or less look the same, whereas a movie would just fall apart if there weren't a director. And that took a little bit to learn, but by now I'm having a lot of fun doing TV exactly because of these limitations, because every, you, it's so fast, you're in and out, you know, it's as if you are getting into this six-day training camp with people you don't know, with a team you've never worked together with, the cinematographer, you have no idea what his style is, you, you have very little time to learn what he's been doing with the other seasons, the other episodes, and you have to work within that environment and adjusting to that is, a, I think, a really good exercise. I think it's made me a much better director whenever I get to make my next feature film. I think TV will have been a good exercise and training camp.